My dad has done such a wonderful job of talking to us. One thing that he talked about was colorism because my sisters are light. We have the same mother, same father. My sisters are light skinned with hazel eyes and I'm like a chocolate drop. My brother is in between, but, um, and my mom was light and my dad was dark. And, and I used to be upset at this conversation, but I understand why he said it. He said, your life is gonna be harder than your sister's. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? Like, I couldn't understand. And, and as an adult, I understand why he felt like he always had to have that conversation with me. Because he was like, your skin is darker. And people look at darker skin people differently than they do lighter skin and they're treated better. And, and I just, it would hurt me that he would say that. You're like six years old, like what? What are you talking about? Like what, we're all the same. Like, and then I realized, no. My sisters as well were very overprotective of my color. Like if anyone said anything negative about my skin color, oh, those were fighting words. And they were always like, you are beautiful. Like they just, they really were overprotective of me. But I have to tell you, I didn't feel the effects of it. As a matter of fact, I feel like some of the opportunities that I did get was because of my color. Like, I play silly. Hey, that, you know, it was like, you know, a typical like, oh, she's supposed to be black and ugly and this, but it opened up a door. I didn't feel it. And if I did see it, feel it, it was like, wow. But very rarely did I feel it. And I think it's because I was so protected. Hi, I'm Jeanette Viadel. You may know me from The Color Purple on Broadway and Girl from the North Country. Join me on Madame Noir's in this room as I talk about friendship, family, and love. The foundation of a great friendship to me is sisterhood. I say sisterhood because I have two amazing sisters and we are best friends. And I feel like having sisters and being best friends with sisters lays the foundation of how you should have friendships with women that are not related to you. We um, support each other, we know each other's weaknesses, and we know each other's strengths. We're honest with each other, which is very important in a friendship because you want someone to, someone to be honest with you. But at the same time, they meet me where I am and they walk with me through my life situations. There's no judgment. Well, there's a bit of judgment, but it's the sisterhood judgment. Like, girl, now did you do, mm -mm. But it's not like, oh, I think less of you or anything like that. And um, they're just willing to take the journey with me in life. And I feel like that's really important for a friendship. And I'm lucky enough to have wonderful sisters and great friends. And we walk each other through our deserts, through our parties, through our time of joy and happy occasions, and through our times of sadness. And even when we're going through things, you know, we're there for each other and that's what's important. Setting boundaries in your friendship is very important. Um, that's why it's important to have friends that you can be honest with and that they can be honest with you. And they would say, okay, listen, well, I just got married, you know, calling me past 11 o'clock, it's not gonna work anymore. And you know, and you have to not get your feelings hurt. You're like, oh, okay, well, you know, enjoy your husband, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But you have to be honest and sensitive and know when it's okay to say things. And sometimes in friendships, we get too comfortable with each other. And you don't want to get so comfortable with anyone that you disrespect them or that you feel that you can say anything you want to say because it's the truth. Because sometimes it's not time to talk about truth. It's time for you to listen and see where that person is coming from. When I think about things I was saying in my 20s, I'm like, thank God there was no Twitter. Thank God there was no Facebook. Wait, am I aging myself? <laughs> but imagine if I was saying some of those things that were just out of ignorance, out of just not having the experience. You know what I mean? So when I hear people talk, and they, even if it's something against what I believe or what I feel, I understand that that's their journey. I, don't, I didn't walk their shoes for them to come to this point. So I'm very open just to saying, okay, that's what you feel, that's what you believe. Wow, tell me more, I'm interested in hearing your story. And I'm not just listening to you so that I can try to put my two cent in and convert you into what I want you to be. That is so selfish. I want you to be who you're supposed to be. So I'm not gonna say, well, you know, you should believe in this. You should believe in this and what you should do, you shouldn't do this. No, 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 no. What do you do? Let's talk about it. This is what I do. 
and let's have a conversation and I'm not trying to convert you and you know because a lot of times you have these conversations with people and they're they're just like oh I'm gonna try to get her to do so I'm gonna try to get her to come to my church that's the main goal I'm gonna try to get her to accept Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior so you don't hear anything that the person is saying you're just going like my opportunity uh, so you know the church I go to so you know what I mean you're just trying to jump in for your own agenda as opposed to like just listening to what the person says. It has nothing to do with you and your church. Just listen, you know. <laughs> my sisters got married at got married young. And so a lot of my, my niece and nephews are kind of my age. So I'm kind of like a millennial like them. <laughs> I'm really close to my family. But my niece is one of my um, best friends. And I know that if I have a red carpet event, she's not into that. So I'm like, hey, um, Mariah, do you wanna go to the Freaky Friday red carpet event with me? And she's like, that's not me. Now, if it's something financial, I wanna go. To show appreciation with her is to call her, is to pray with her, is to take her out to dinner because she likes to eat, you know? So, you know, you have to know your friends and it's, it's an individual thing. You do have a lot of people that want to be your friends. The higher you go up or more people know you or you're in this show and that show, it's kind of hard to navigate because you don't want to be standoffish with people because you don't know where people are and you don't know how they can add to your life. You know, and I'm all about being a light to everyone. So yes, I have to be guarded in my friendships, but I do want to give people an opportunity to get to know me or give myself an opportunity to get to know people and not say, oh, well, I'm, you just want me for this. Because sometimes you could just want me for that, but the friendship goes a different way and you realize that you needed me for this. And if I feel it's not for me, then I'll take that note and say, okay, this is not a friendship. This may be a mentorship. Friendships kind of find you and they kind of happen. When I meet my tribe, I know it. I know it, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. there's something special about that person. And attract those people who ex accept you for who you are, who are willing to go on that journey with you, who are not afraid to correct you if need be, but who are not afraid to cry with you and laugh with you and support you through every journey of your life. So I want my friends to be able to say things that I don't necessarily agree, agree with. Guess what? Somebody's gonna get on my nerves, but I'm not throwing you away. My brother, was he was a, an atheist and I, I'm a Christian. I was like, well, congratulations. I appreciate the fact that you have your own perception of who God is, which is there is no God because that is your perception. That is what you feel. Now, would I like you to believe in God? Of course, but I'm gonna meet you where you are. Throwing people away for things that they feel and they honestly feel, I don't think it's right. Love is friendship. Love is support. Love is loyalty. When I said love is loyalty, love is loyalty, but there are some people who are not loyal, but they love you. Some people don't know how to be loyal, but that doesn't mean that they don't love you. And it's hard for the person on the other side to understand that because you're like, but I thought you loved me, but you're not loyal. And that stems from things that are deeper that they've been through. It takes a certain amount of maturity to see love and to understand love and to understand what is love and understand what is not love. And believe me, I have some opinionated, strong family members and I'm like, mm, I don't agree with that, but I love you anyway, let's go out to eat, talk about something else. Whenever I get information, whether it's on finance or just anything new, I'm constantly sharing it with my family. We've been able to grow together spiritually, financially, and that's important because you don't want to leave anybody in the dust. You know what I mean? If one is going higher, we just bring the other with us. And sometimes that can, that can hurt you because you, like, you always want to bring people with you, like me. I'm like telling my friends, like, I'm going to do this. You got to come or I'm doing this. And sometimes it is just for you, but you have to figure out what that is. You know, sometimes it's just for you and your family can't come and that's when it's hard for me because I want to bring everybody with me. I want everyone to experience what I'm experiencing, but sometimes that's not the case. I feel that when I leave this earth, I want to have had my footprint where people can see what I've done. I want to leave something behind for others so that they can be successful. I want to leave a mantle for 
whoever's willing to pick it up and take it. And there's a song that I wrote called Healing Running Through My Veins, and it's a song about healing. I want people to listen to that for the rest of the time <laughs> and, and still feel the effects of feeling healing while listening to that song. So it's just, it's just about leaving something for the next generation to make their life easier.